And then, so what happened from there? Well, I still performed. I was coming to Nashville a lot. Um, I was on a show called Star Search. <laughs> the kids go, huh? Nowadays, I'm like, it was like American Idol back in the day. I promise, if you can find a VHS. Um, <laughs> It's the struggle, it's true. Um, but that, you know, that also was too much. You know, you're, you're trying to figure out who you are. You're, you know, you're lost. You know, my mother at that time was a single mom and it was a struggle for her. She had my sister and myself and she was really struggling, you know, questioning her own life and her own existence. We'd been through so much at that time. Um, so yeah. It was, it was a lot, you know, it looked like, it looked glamorous. It looked like, wow, she's got it going on. She's on this show, she's traveling. People want to be next to her. But I was so depressed. I was so, I was without God. So. Yeah. Okay, so you're doing star, 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 mm -hmm. I can't even say the word, star, star search. search. Help me, Lord. It's much more beautiful when you say it, star <laughs> search. Star search. Yeah. Um, did you win? I did not. But I was, um, I was, from that, I was given a lot of great work. I was working on showboats in Louisiana, just, you know, doing the circuit, you know, um, coming here a lot and singing. A lot of stories about, you know, shows and showcases I did. I had a lot of opportunities and I did get some um, deal offers, but at that time my mom was not willing to move here, which that, but they weren't gonna let me just jump out here by myself and that's understandable. But uh, I think at that point, I don't think I know that I just had like a, a heavy disappointment. Like I, I was striving so young and you know, your identity, of course, that, that doesn't just, I don't think come to just everyone. I mean, most people have a story of, of how long it took for them to see who they were to God, but um, at that age, at that point, my identity was in, like a lot of people, if I make it, then I'll, I'll be there. I'll be it, that'll be it. You know, I'll have proven or I'll have, you know, we came from poverty. So it was like, I'll, I'll save the family, you know? And um, so I think just not having that yes in that moment after I'd worked what I thought so hard, you know, I, I, I know that I, I became very angry. And then, you know, I was still dealing with depression and I was still, you know, living like I was a 20 something year old when I was only 15. And that's when alcohol and drugs came into my life. And so um, I've, I've met a lot of creatives and I know that we have that in common, that feeling, that need, because your feelings are so, you know, they're, they're intense more so than most sometimes. Um, it was a numbing, it, it numbed. It numbed what I needed to numb. That, that cycle took hold pretty, pretty hard. So by the time I was 18, I was uh, doing meth. And that's something that, you know, I looked at people and thought, how could somebody do that? How can that, that's like such a dirty drug or that, how do you get that far? How do you go that far? But it's when I look at it, it's just like one, one step to the next. And it's the people that I was around. And it was, you know, the, the assault on my heart as, you know, as a little girl, it just, it was an escape. And so at that point from the drug use, I developed nodules on my vocal cords. So singing was pretty much not an option at that point. Um, so, and once again, another abusive relationship physically because that was familiar to me. I, I didn't even really have that revelation until five years ago. What is it that I'm drawn to and why it was so huge? You know, God was like, walked me through that intensely. And it, and it was this light bulb, spiritual light bulb that I'm like, it seems so simple, but you know, that's, that's the trick. That's the trick when you're young, you know, that the enemy says, oh, I can get them. This is the generational pattern that I can continue. Um, and so at, from that point on, um, I met my children's father and I, I became pregnant very early. I was 21. And I do remember the day I had my, my first son. And I know this is 
every parent, <laughs> I would hope. But um, looking at him and saying, oh, this is what it's like. This must be what God feels like about me. And even though I had that revelation in that moment, you know, there was so much work to do and I was still living such a life of disobedience and, and, and you know, not, not truly taking hold of his truth and his word and not working through the junk, the muck, you know, you have to, you have to. Yes, God can deliver you in a moment and he did do that for me, but there's a process that has to happen because once you go through those processes, you're, you can lend them to other people. It's not an order that's like, this must be how you do it. It's, it's this is the way it should be done. My, my love, I feel like that's how he says it, you know? So I still wasn't, I didn't surrender myself to God even at that point. So, you know, my oldest son saw a lot of heartache because I just repeated, repeated the pattern, you know, in, in that marriage. Um, you know, alcohol and just a lot of, of, of anger and, you know, we weren't following the Lord. So he experienced that. And it's like, you don't even realize you're repeating patterns. You don't, you don't realize it. But, um, you know, my children, I can say that God has used them to remind me of how much he loves me, you know, because I just, there are times that going through the years where when you're not holding on to Jesus and you don't know who you are to him and what you were created for, you're going to, there's gonna be doors that open and cracks even ever so small where the enemy tells you that you're not worth anything and that you don't even belong here, you know? Um, I know that that's been something that's crept in through my family generation after generation. I see it now. And so I, I war against it and I'm breaking it. You know, there's no doubt in my mind I'm breaking it, but fast forward through, you know, my, my uh, kids getting older and me continuing the path, I divorced their father and I continued relationships that had a different packaging, but the inside was still the same. It was still that I was connecting to what was familiar and unhealthy, the trauma bond, those things, you know, it was like what I experienced as a child. And um, I finally realized the toll it had taken on my kids. And in 2017, um, it was the darkest time of my life. I came home and, and, and my personality has always been to snap out of it. You know, even if I made a choice that wasn't great, I'd find some way, okay, this is gonna be, you know, pull my bootstraps up. Um, Cause I'd started so young doing that. So it definitely was my, my way. But in 2017, the depression and just realizing the toll of all of the choices that I had made, um, it was my rock bottom. And I clearly, truly believed that if I left, if I checked out, that my children would be better off. That life would be better for everyone. I believed that in that moment. I was really so lost and had gone to such a dark place that I was ready to end my life. And I was alone and I laid down on the floor in a fetal position and I just screamed because I had made up my mind about how I was gonna do it. And I don't even know if there were words that came out of my mouth, but it was the internal feeling of help me. It was just a guttural scream, but in my in, inside I was saying help me. Like if you're really here, help me. And he said so clearly to me, are you done? And it's still, when I say it, I still can't truly convey to anyone what that really meant because to me, it was a slideshow in the spirit of every bit of my life. It was so fast. And I knew immediately what that meant. And I, I mean, some people, are you done? When I say that, I'm like, 
He meant, are you done doing it your way? Are you ready? Are you ready to follow me? Are you ready to let me be the one over your, the Lord of your life? And it, he said, I love you. And I lifted up from the floor. Like, I, I think I did explain this one thing to you. I lifted, it felt like I had strings attached to me, like a puppet. That's the only way I know how to explain this. It, it felt like I got lifted up and then stood up. And from that day, I turned from the people and the things that I was doing to fill that void that only he could fill. And I haven't turned back. And God has used me when I let him, which is every day that I can. I want to meet someone that says, I don't know who I am. I don't think I can make it. I want that moment where I can say, let me tell you, let me tell you about the dark places I've been. Let me tell you where I, where I got to. Let me tell you that if he loves me like that, he loves you like that. And it's more than you'll ever know, more than you can ever even imagine. And, um, you know, me doing this with you, the season we've all been through, where we were in isolation, it's like the enemy wanted to keep us in a place where we weren't doing that, where we weren't encouraging each other, where we weren't reminding each other of who we are and who God says we are. And it's like, I'm so thankful for this new season because I feel like everyone's on fire to do that. 